This is a true story, and I say that over and over. This is a true story, but this story, and I hate saying it because it involves air travel, but it is true. I was on a flight, and the engine blew up. It was fucking terrifying. It was like, and the whole, I guess, and the whole plane started vibrating, and uh, clearly I'm not the black guy from Police Academy who makes funny noises, because that's not the noise. It didn't go, the engine was like, Thank you. <laughs> and there was a rooster on the wing. Ah, 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 ah! <laughs> and a lawn sprinkler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's as much of Michael Winslow's act I've seen. So, so the engine blew up. This is a true story, and the whole plane starts vibrating and shooting straight towards the earth, and it was terrifying. And I thought, well, before you freak out and lose your shit, see what the flight attendants are doing. And there was two flight attendants, and they turned around. They had been looking out the window, and they turned around, and they were crying. <laughs> crying flight attendants. You know, they're always there. Oh, we're here for your safety? Fuck that. These whores had checked out. They were like... <laughs> Crying flight attendants. I pooped a little. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie fucking do. That's gonna be my double finger. All right. Um, <laughs> I pooped a little. All right. Get back in the show. All right. So the engine blew up, and the plane. We're going to New York, and the and the and the plane it starts. It's really just going, making this weird noise. And the pilot got on. The pilot's all mellow, and he goes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. We're gonna land in Cleveland in three minutes. <laughs> now that was the very reason to be alarmed, his voice. You get what I'm saying? I would have been less freaked out if that pilot got on that PA and was like, ah! Oh, oh fuck, do not! Look out the right side. Jesus, Mary, and good St. Joseph. <laughs> Fuck me. All right. Oh. You know what? Keep your trays where they are. It really doesn't matter. Go ahead and smoke. Kiss a stranger. Rub one out in your seat, because uh, I'm going to try some shit I learned in pilot school. <laughs> but I never had to do it until now. There's no reason to be alarmed. By the way, that's the voice of death. Like, if you walk out of here tonight, right, and someone jumps out of, from nowhere and goes, I'm gonna fucking kill you! He's not gonna kill you. That's just some dumb drunk jock that wants his buddies to pull him off of you so he doesn't really have to fight. I'm gonna fucking kill you! Calm down, Todd, he's not worth it. <laughs> you better get the fuck out of here. Todd had a lot of Red Bull. That's the voice of death. If you walk out of here and a guy came up behind you and said, I'm gonna kill you, that fucker's gonna kill you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Jeffrey Dahmer didn't go, I'm gonna fucking eat your brains. Ah! He was like, uh, hey, can I get you another drink? Does this, does this rag smell funny to you? <laughs> Thanks for bringing him back, officer. We were having a lover's spat. I don't know where his clothes are. <laughs> Way to go, Milwaukee Police Department. All right, so, um, oh, here's my point. Now, I'm gonna lose some of you, and I want you to stick with me. I'm not gonna lose you because this is a super intelligent joke. I'm gonna lose you because you're gonna get a little offended, but please just stick with me till the end. The other people on the flight, and I'm not making this up, was the United States Special Olympics team. Uh, I know. I'm not making it up, I'm sorry. If you're... It, it wasn't me and the cast of Lost. That's who was on the flight. It was 45 men and women in red, white, and blue running suits with medals on. So if it wasn't the Special Olympics team, it was a really big hip hop group with Down syndrome. <laughs> and as the plane was careening towards Earth, the pilot got on again, he goes, hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. When we land in Cleveland, 
the runway will be covered entirely in foam. <laughs> and at the very end of the runway will be a fire truck. And um, I thought, well, this is my biggest fear. I'm, I am dying. And then, clear as a bell, one guy in the back of the plane went, fire truck! <laughs> He is excited. He is going to see a fire truck. Fire truck? Yeah, motherfucking fire truck. If, if we live, you will see a fire truck. That's right. Fire truck? True story. I know some of you work with mentally challenged people, and I know some of you have mentally challenged people in your family, but if you don't think they say or do anything funny, you're denying that they're human beings, because that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard another human being say. I got pulled over by a cop with a stutter. This is a true story. This really happened in real life. A guy came up to the window, I'm Officer Papa, I'm Papa, I'm Papa. Parks from the sheriff's apartment. You know why pulled you over this evening? I was like, to mess with my head? Are you serious? <laughs> How am I supposed to not giggle and go to prison for the rest of my life? That's not even fair. And he's a sheriff. How dangerous is that? Free, 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 free. Bang, shit. Dude, Tim shot another one. He can't get freeze out in time. That can't be legal. What if you had a stutter and got pulled over by that cop? You know, I pop and pop and pull your no, no, no. Don't you no, no, make fun of me, mother. No, I'm no, no, nah, that's how I talk. talk. Get him the grow and grow. You have to change tapes in the dash cam halfway through. Yeah, I was in a bank robbery once. This is crazy, speaking of violent places. I, uh, I walked into a bank, and, uh, and I'm standing near the bank uh, door, the front door of the bank, and this dude comes running in, and, uh, and as he's running in, I notice he's got a gun in his hand and a Bill Clinton mask on. This is not made up for the show. Bill Clinton mask and a gun in his hand, and I'm the only one to see him. So naturally, I thought, that's a weird way to run into a bank. <laughs> you never think bank robbery, right? Not on my watch, buddy. And then my mind caught up to what was happening, and I was like, holy shit, this guy's gonna rob us. So I peed a little bit. That's a time management issue. They don't let you go during the robbery. I watch TV. <laughs> and I turned to everybody. I'm like, oh, you guys. And they looked at me, and then I, was, and, and then I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> All I could think of is the movies where they say, this is a robbery, but you can't say that if you're in the front, because then you're the fucking robber. <laughs> so I froze, and I, I kind of motioned to him. as he, I got their attention, and I went, hey and I introduced him. I hosted the bank robbery, basically. <laughs> Give it up for your robber! He came in with a gun in his hand and a Bill Clinton mask on, and, and he goes, everybody on your knees! And nobody laughed but me. I just recently moved to uh, Encino, California, which I believe is the capital of Israel, I think. Uh, I have to tell you this story that happened. Uh, there was a uh, there was a big uh, buffed out uh, Persian guy, was, uh, which they're Iranians, but they say they're Persian because it sounds better, right? Uh, even though Persia hasn't existed for centuries. Um, it's like, where are you from? Iran. Oh, you're Iranian? I'm not Iranian, I'm Persian. Okay. <laughs> That's like me going up to some Mexican guy. Hey, where are you from? Mexico. Oh, so you're Mexican? No, Aztec. You know, you can't, <laughs> you can't hold on to shit forever. You know? So, so this guy, he's this big buffed out Persian guy. You ever see the big buffed out guys? You only work on their upper body, but not their legs. You ever see these guys? Look like a meatball and a pair of toothpicks, right? So I'm standing out front waiting for somebody to pick me up, right? And then outside this apartment complex, someone's parked behind his car. And he doesn't know who, right? And this guy sees me, thinks I know, right? He comes right at me, he goes, hey, 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 is this your parking? In my parking? I was like, uh, you know me? Uh, no, no. Then who's, who's, who's parking in my parking? 
Now, right then, the neighborhood rat comes out. You know, the guy doesn't work during the day, knows everybody's business on the block. He comes out eating cheese. Like, yeah, I know who you're looking for. <laughs> Two girls and a guy, they went in that apartment. It's about a half hour ago. So now this Persian guy knows that the owner of the vehicle is in that apartment complex somewhere, right? And he decides to go to the intercom. You can't see anybody, and he's going to dial everybody and find out whose cars are. He's like, tuk, 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 tuk. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. Is this your parking? In my fucking parking? I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Is this your parking in my fucking spot of mine? <laughs> Stupid. And he hangs up on her. I'm like, who the hell is this guy, right? Goes to the next. Thing. Tuk, 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 tuk. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. Is this your parking? In my fucking parking. <laughs> um, no. Then who's, who's, who's parking in my fucking parking? <laughs> so why I get involved at this point, I have no idea, right? <laughs> so I go, look, man, I'm afraid this guy's gonna get shot. I'm like, it's a 2004 Ultima. It's a red 2004 Ultima. We would use that that I just gave you, right? And, and relay it the same way, not this guy. Tuk, 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 tuk. Uh, yeah, hello. yeah, yeah. Is this your parking? In my parking with Ultima of Red? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite. It's just your parking in my parking in 2004. <laughs> yes or fucking no? <laughs> I realized that this guy's like that probably all the time. This is the kind of guy, this is the type of dude that probably calls up information, you know? <laughs> information? What city? Please. No city. I want friend Rahim. You have? <laughs> I'm sorry, so you have to have a city. I don't want fucking city. I want friend Rahim. You have yes or fucking no? <laughs> okay, forget, forget. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> forget. Okay, it's 411, right? 411, 411, information? I want you to tell me who's parking in my fucking parking. I do, because that's the thing, is my jokes are a lot of times true stories. People ask me all the time, Brad, you're a comedian. How do you write your material? I don't. Here's how I write jokes. Step one, be a dwarf. Step two, wait. <laughs> funny shit's gonna happen to you. I never know when. It's not like I look down, like, oh, three o'clock, funny shit's about to happen. No, you know, it's not like that. It just happens randomly. Like, not too long ago, I took my mom out to lunch. Uh, now, before I go on with this joke, uh, just know that my mom is not a little person like me, and my dad, not a dwarf. No, I know, we don't have to all come from the same tribe. Uh, you can't like drive down the street and be like, which house do the dwarves live in? It's the mushroom with the door in it. So my mom is driving, I'm in the passenger seat, not a booster, fuck off. And I'm the normal chair, like a big boy. And my mom comes behind this guy, and this guy's trying to turn down a one-way street, but he's going the wrong way down the one-way street. And this is causing all sorts of traffic, and people are honking, getting very upset. My mom is right behind him. She is polite. She's a prim and proper Southern Belle from Savannah, Georgia. And she looks at the guy, she goes, uh, excuse me there, sir. I don't believe you can make a left-hand turn at this particular intersection. <laughs> I know, you hear that, you want lemonade right now, don't you? Like, that's my mom. And then this guy proceeds to look at my mother and goes, why don't you shut the fuck up? I'm killing you right now, okay? I'm killing you, you say that to my mom? That's my mom, I love my mom. She gave birth to me, and just so you know, giving birth to a dwarf is not easy. It's not like you just sneeze and we fly out of there, okay? Like. The doctor isn't sitting there with a catcher's mitt, like, you know, like that, that doesn't happen. No, it is very hard to give birth to a little person. When I was born, my head was about the same size as it is right now, okay? Do you understand what that means? And my mom never complained. She never once complained. My dad, he complains about it all the time. He tells me, like, you realize that was the first pussy you ever tore up? But yeah, that's my mom. She gave birth to me. I will defend this woman. I will die for this woman. So I get out of the car and I start yelling at this guy, what the hell did you just say? What the hell? Get out here. Get out here, you son of a bitch. Let's go, asshole. And he gets out of the car. I'm like, oh shit, this is actually happening right now. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is going to come as a shock to you people. Uh, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> no such thing as midget UFC, okay? Like, there should be midget UFC. 
that would be awesome. Like me and Wee Man in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Like, Let's get it on. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not. So I don't know how to fight. The only fighting I know is stuff I learned from video games in the 90s. This guy's charging at me, and I have some weird instinct. I just look at him, and I go, Hadouken. <laughs> I guess, and I just, I just say Hadouken. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, I will explain. There was a video game in the 90s called Street Fighter 2. OK, Street Fighter. There were two characters in that game. They wouldn't just punch and kick. No, they would yell out Hadouken and they would throw a fireball from their hands. A fireball, because that might be useful in a fight. Eh, punch, kick, eh, fuck, fireball. It, it works. And that's right. I'm like, Hadouken. I just yelled it out. You think I'm crazy, but this shows you how much people don't know about little people. I yelled out Hadouken. This guy flinched and then, like, ran away. He ran away. Do you understand what that means? That means that when I yelled out Hadouken, this guy thought, well, he is a dwarf. He can probably throw a fireball. <laughs> I'm booking it. At that point, I would give all my money, all of my money, to be there when this guy told his friends this story. <laughs> No, bro, you have no idea what happened to me, man. I yelled at this woman today, she got pissed off, she had a button on her car, an attack midget just like ran out of her car like that. And the attack midget starts throwing fireballs at me. I had to block it and like dodge and do that. I didn't even know they had attack midgets. I have seen every episode of MTV Cribs. You never saw a fitted set like, yo, this is my Mercedes and it comes with a motherfucking attack midget right there. It never happened. And you would assume that from Mercedes or BMW, sure. But based on what I saw today, let me tell you right now, Kia has stepped their game up. 